Hello and welcome to our Pascal's Triangle video. In order to create a Pascal's Triangle, you have to imagine that you're placing two imaginary zeros uh, along the number one and then add the two pairs together. As you continue doing that, you get a, a pattern uh, that looks somewhat like a triangle and that is Pascal's Triangle. There are many patterns in Pascal's Triangle. Uh, the first diagonal, as you can see, is all just ones. The, the second diagonal, as you can see, are counting numbers. So they go one, two, three, four, five, and so on. The third diagonal is kind of interesting. Uh, it takes on the form of triangular numbers. And triangular numbers are numbers that you can make into a triangle. So with three, you can have three dots and make them into a triangle. Uh, with six, you can have six dots and make them into a triangle. So these are the numbers that you can stack together to make a triangle. Uh, it's kind of an interesting pattern in Pascal's triangle. Um, there are many other patterns. These are just uh, a few. Uh, another interesting concept in Pascal's triangle is that the numbers added together are powers of two. So as you can see, as you add the numbers in, a, in the lines, you end up with consecutive powers of 2. Like this uh, pattern, powers of 11 are also shown in Pascal's Triangle, uh, except this time, instead of adding the numbers, the numbers themselves are the powers of 11. So 1 is 11 power to 0, uh, 11 is 11 to the power of 1, uh, and 121 is 11 power to 2, etc., etc. Another use of Pascal's triangle is in binomial expansion. So let's look at a problem here. Say that you want to flip a coin three times uh, and you want to see whether it will land on heads or tails. So you have your x and y and you know that you want to flip it three times. So you go to Pascal's triangle and you look at the row that has a three in it and you have your coefficients one, three, three, and one. So you take those coefficients and attach them onto your expanded equation. Um, so your x and your y's are there. But the thing you need to know is that your x and y can only add up to 3, the exponent on both of them. So your first one, your x will have an exponent of 3 and your y will have an exponent of 0. Uh, then they go down. So in the next uh, section, your x is going to have an exponent of 2 and your y will have an exponent of 1. Uh, and so on and so on. <clears throat> so your 3x squared y is the one that you're going to use to figure out your probability. You'll just substitute 0 0.50 for x and y. Another way Pascal's triangle can be used in real life is in combinatoric terms. In that, for example, imagine you're given five flavors of ice cream. If we look at Pascal's triangle, if you were given zero flavors of ice cream, there would only be one combination or one way of choosing zero, which is zero. If you were given one flavors, flavor of ice cream, then the number of ways you can choose zero is one, and the number of ways you can choose one is one. That goes down the side. However, this would therefore mean the first row. This is still the second row. This is still the third, fourth, and fifth. So if we were given, for example, five flavors of ice cream and we were to choose three, we would look at the sixth row where there would be five flavors of ice cream. Now, we were to choose three. So same thing goes along the bottom here. If you, if you were to choose zero, there would only be one way. Therefore, to choose one would be five, which makes sense. It would be chocolate, vanilla, strawberry, mint, and bubblegum. So, zero, one, two, three ways. Therefore, to choose three, you would have ten different combinations. So I hope this video helped you learn more about Pascal's triangle and made you realize that this triangle is more than just numbers. Uh, and it's been studied for centuries and is named after this French scientist, Blaise Pascal. Uh, thank you, Choose Maths, uh, for helping us bring this video to you.